Welcome to Beyond the Coverage. I'm Chris Horner. In today's edition, I want to talk about Wild Van Art, the big guy classic specialist, Tour de France stage winner. He is looking to go into the Giro d'Italia. His words, not mine. Looks like the big guy from Yamo Visma wants to be their race leader at this year's Giro d'Italia. And can you guys blame him? I mean, wow. He's going to come into the Giro with a shot at trying to win a Grand Tour. Now, we had all laughed about it. You'd heard multiple comments. I'd seen it on my page. I'd seen it while I was working for NBC. People commenting about whether or not if Wout Van Aert could win the Tour de France. And I remember, remember one Bob Roll even saying he'd eat his hat if Wout Van Aert won the Tour de France. wonder if Bob Roll would eat his hat if he wins the Giro d'Italia. Because right now... I'm looking at it sitting up here from beyond the coverage, and I'm thinking he's the outright favorite to win if you don't see Primoz Roglic, Jonas Finigo, Tade Pogaccio, or Remco Evenepoel there, who is going to drop the big guy, Wout Van Aert. Remember, when we start looking at the Giro stages, stages one and two have a little bit of climbing, but once you get into three, all the way to the first time trial on stage seven, those are all sprinter stages from three all the way through six, I mean, Wout can have 40 seconds, 50 seconds, one minute in time bonuses before we even get to the individual time trial on stage seven. Then you look at the individual time trial at over 30 kilometers long with a little slight hill, uphill finish at the, at the very end of that individual time trial. All of a sudden you start thinking, Wout might put in 40 seconds, one minute on most of the GC favorites, even if one is there by the name of Garrett Thomas from Team Enos. Garrett went there and was wearing the pink jersey in the 2023 edition and of course only lost on the penultimate stage to Primoz Roglic. But now, could Garrett Thomas go to the Giro and already be two minutes down on Wout Van Aert after the Stage 7 individual time trial? If I take you back two years ago at the Tour de France, Garrett Thomas went third on the general classification but lost 20 seconds to Wout Van Aert thereabouts at the first time trial and then lost 40 seconds on the last time trial to Wout Van Aert and that was a mountain time trial. It had an uphill finish, not a mountain, but it had a solid uphill climb to the finish with two bumps in that individual time trial course that was very late in the 22 edition of the Tour de France and Garen Thomas was riding on good form and still lost 40 seconds there. So when we finished the Giro there after stage seven of the individual time trial, wow, could be two minutes up on everybody. I mean, we look and right now we, don't, we know that the top, top favorites that I've already mentioned, Tadej Pogacar, Jonas, Primos, and Remco Evenepoel, probably they're not going to show up at the Giro and of course, unless the Giro opens up the checkbook and pays one of those four riders to show up. So when we start looking at the we know Jai Henley, he's won the Giro d'Italia and we know he's motivated to go there and try to win again Keanu Oudebrooks, his teammate, who went solid in top 10 at the Vuelta Espana this last 2023 season here in the professional peloton. He looks motivated to go over. So there's two guys from Bora Hansgrove that could give a little bit of a hard time when we start talking about getting into the mountains to Wild Van Aert. But can these guys drop Wild Van Aert? I mean, guys, Wild Van Aert has won Mount Van Two. And he dropped everybody in the break and didn't lose much time to the GC favorites when they were climbing up Mont Ventoux two seasons ago at the Tour de France when he won that year. And he won the individual time trial and he won a sprint stage on the Champs. Now we start looking at the 2022 season. Man, let me remind you guys, stage 18. Remember stage 18 when they were going up Otacom and we saw the big battle back there from Yumbo Visma, UAE Team Emirates battling going up the penultimate climb. Tade Pogacar goes over the top. Garen Thomas has dropped multiple times going up the climb along with every other GC guy with the exception of Jonas Vinigo. When Tade Pogacar and Jonas Vinigo went over the top, well, Wout Van Aert dropped everybody in the break, then went up Otacom and dropped Tade Pogacar going up there. Of course, the Slovenian did crash, I know. So I'm not saying that Wout Van Aert can drop the Slovenian Tadej Pogacar, but nonetheless, on stage 18, three weeks deep into the Tour de France, he had dropped everyone, Wout Van Aert, including Tadej Pogacar. The only guy left on his wheel was his teammate Jonas Finigo, who ended up winning that stage, and Wout Van Aert finished third on Oticom. So, do we believe up here on the Beyond the Coverage? Of course, I believe. Wow, Van Aert could win the Giro d'Italia. What's he got to do to get himself ready, though? Well, first off, he's got to change some strategy. Certainly, he has to change the way that he races when we're talking about how aggressive he is in the beginning of the early stages throughout the Grand Tours. We look at the Tour de France, and of course, he wasn't riding for general classification those stages, 
but he was always spending a lot of energy all over the place. He's going to need a strong team going into the Giro, and that is a little bit complicates things because Jumbo Visma, of course, are going to fo focus on the Tour de France with Jonas Vinigo. Sepp Kuss is going to go there, most likely Steven Kreiswick, Thies Benoud. We're going to see Christophe Laporte over there. Dylan Van Barley is going to go to the Tour de France too. So you might not have that A team going to the Giro to help out Wout Van Aert when you get into the mounts. Of course, you could have a one rider like Wilco Kelderman that just stays with him the whole time throughout the mounts. And if he is... If he does come off and start to get dropped from the climbers, like Jai Henley and, of course, Garen Thomas, if he's coming off the wheel, maybe you have one rider like Wilco Kelderman who's on flying form if Wal Van Aert's lucky. If he's not lucky, this is where we start seeing some dilemmas when we're talking about Wal Van Aert trying to win at the Giro d'Italia in 2024. Now, I can tell you stories. I remember riding with way back in the day with Mercury, and we had this sprinter on our team named Baden Cook. We also had this other sprinter on our team named Gordon Frazier. Gordon Frazier was the sprinter on our team, the number one ace sprinter. And every time we went to the field sprints there, he always had the ace team all around him doing this amazing, massive lead out for him where there was nobody left by the time Gordon Frazier had the sprint. And he was such a quality sprinter. The guy won like something like 100 field sprints in like two seasons. It was remarkable how much he won. But he had the ace lead out team all the time. And I remember Baden Cook, who won the green jersey at the Tour de France later after he left Mercury. I remember him complaining one time to me because he was saying John Warden, the director sportif of the team there, would get upset with him because he wouldn't win when Gord Frazier wasn't around. But then he also pointed out, hey, Chris, I don't have that ace team around me the whole time like Gord has. Gord has yourself. He had, of course... Hank Vogel's in there doing massive lead outs for him that by the time we get done stringing it out for 8-10 laps in a criterium or any kind of flat sprint that we were coming down to, all of a sudden there's nobody left. Well, that's the same kind of dilemma that Wild Van Aert's going to have to deal with at the Giro where Jonas Vinigo, when we go back, remember the stage 11 of the 2022 Tour de France called the Grenon, one of the most epic stages ever where Tade Pogacar lost his first Tour de France to Jonas Vinigo on that stage 11. They had six guys, Jumbo Visma, in the front group. Jonas was there. Primoz Roglic was there. Sepp Kuss was there. Thies Benut was there. Christophe Laporte was up there for a little bit. And, of course, Wild Van Aert was in there, too. So they had numbers all over the place. And that's a different scenario that Wout's going to have to deal with at the Giro. He's not going to have stacked numbers. But because we're at the Giro and not the Tour de France, none of the teams are going to have stacked numbers in there to really go against Wout Van Aert. So if the other riders that are trying to race for first, second, third, top five, top ten on general classification, if they race really negative against Wout Van Aert and he doesn't have one on form Wilco Kelderman flying for him or a rider such as a Wilco Kelderman, maybe it's a Matteo Jorgensen, the American rider who's joining over from Movistar this season to come to Yambo Visma for next year. Maybe he shows up at the Giro and he's that ace climber. We don't know yet, right? For sure, someone from Yumbo Visma is going to ride good to help Wout Van Aert deep into the mountains. But he needs that solid team so that when we're talking about stage one, stage two, it's a little bumpy and hilly there towards the finish. He can stay protected, not lose time, gain time bonuses. Then, like I said, all the way from three through six when they're going to be field sprints, he's got a team that can make it a field sprint so Wild Van Aert can gain 10-second time bonuses left and right and go into that stage seven individual time trial already a minute up on all the GC favorites because you know Garen Thomas can't sprint, right? We're not going to dispute that. Once we get an individual time trial, Wild Van Aert goes to work. We leave the individual time trial in the first week and before the first First week of the Giro d'Italia finishes up. That's when we get into the first real mountain stages. Then we're going to see where Wout Van Aert is. Now that brings us to the next dilemma. Where will Wout Van Aert be when we get into the mountains? Can the big guy be small? Can he get himself small? Now remember, we've seen Miguel Andarang win five Tour de France's. Tom Dumoulin, he ended up winning the Giro d'Italia. Chris Froome, tall guy, but not very big, but we know he's won four Tour de France's, he's got a couple Bualtes, he's got a Giro d'Italia, and he's done three of those in a row, all talking about from Tour de France Spain to the Giro the following year consecutively. No one's ever done that, and he's a big guy. Got to be about 6'2 in size. I know he's much taller than me, but he's not really large in size, Chris Froome, but he's still a tall guy. Not big, though. Now, when we start looking at some of the other riders, the next name has to be Wiggins, right? Wiggins, monster rider. 
Never thought Wiggins could have ever won the 2012 Tour de France, but he did and he was a big guy. So we know it can be done when you start looking at Miguel Endering, Chris Froome, Wiggins in there, and Tom Dumoulin. Those are four examples that show for sure when you're sitting on the Chesterfield for the 24 Giro the Italian, while Van Aert says he wants to win, you better take them serious because when you start looking at the competition and you start looking at the history of how good he's climbed at the Tour de France and how well he's raced in terms of riding against the best climbers in the world, we know he's a serious threat to win the Giro d'Italia. Now, in what I can remember in climbing stages, the only thing I can remember from Wout Van Aert going for GC is if you go back to the 2021 Torino Adriatico where he tried to win the general classification there against the Slovenian Tadej Pogaccia. Well, he won stage one. He put himself in the race leader's jersey. And then, of course, Tadej Pogacar dislodged the big guy. But the big guy came back and won the individual time trial and put something like 15 seconds into Tadej Pogacar and went second over on the general classification. And third at that year's 21 Torino Adriatico, well, that was Mikhail Landa. Remember? The Spaniard went third there. And Garrett Thomas happened to be there, too. I think he finished eh, top 24 or something like that on the general classification. But he lost a ton of time to Wout Van Aert on all of the stages of that year's 21 Torino Adriatico. That, in my mind, is the only climbing GC stage racing that I've ever seen Wout Van Aert go for the overall general classification. And he went second, and it was Tade Pogaccia that beat him. So now when he's going into this year's Giro d'Italia in 2024, we know we have to take it serious. He's got to be a little bit careful. It is Thanksgiving tomorrow. Hope you guys all have a fabulous Thanksgiving day here. Uh, hopefully it goes fantastic and the turkey is per cooked perfect. For Wild Van Art, hopefully it's perfect too. And hopefully the pie is not too perfect so he doesn't eat too many of them. Because that's the next big obstacle for Wild Van Art if he wants to win a Grand Tour. He's got to start the Giro incredibly leaned out. Now, well, like I said, I give you plenty of examples when we look at Otacom, when he went third on the general classification, when he won Mount Ventoux, when he went second on the general classification at Trino Adriatico. But now once you're going into the Giro, you got to come in as leaned out as possible. So while Van Aert, after he gets out of Thanksgiving here and once he gets out of the holidays, the Christmas holidays, you got to be careful when you get into December with the calories because there's not a whole lot of time once you start talking about getting into May if he wants to come in as lean as possible. We all know from the history with Jumbo Visma, with Primoz Roglic and Jonas Vinigo, and just about every other climbing member on Jumbo Visma, that they're going to focus on having Wout Van Aert come in the thinnest he possibly can. And that's going to start right after Thanksgiving Day tomorrow. I'm sure they'll give him a little bit of room at Christmas and a couple little sneak peeks of some chocolates here or there throughout the holidays. But other than that, you know he's going to be focused on losing weight. His next big obstacle, like I said, is going to be what team do they bring to the Giro to help him win. They need to make sure he has at least one guy, like I said, a Wilco Kelderman, maybe a Mateo Jorgensen, like I said. But either way, his next big obstacle, once you add in what he can't factor in for, is going to have to be going into strategically racing smart and not wasting any energy. Plus, Wout needs to know how to look after the rest of his teammates. Anytime I was a team leader, whether if I was winning the Vuelta a España in 2013 or any other race before that in my career, I always was looking after myself in the race and my complete team because if you're not coming in with that dominating team that we've seen from Jumbo Visma at the Tour de France victories from Jonas Finigo, then you don't have an unlimited supply of energy. So he has to be careful to be able to have at least one, if not two riders with him deep into the mountain stages when we're talking about getting attacked from a Jai Henley or a Garrett Thomas. Either way though, right now, when I'm looking at it, dissecting his race strategy, follow the wheels into the mountain stages, don't be overly aggressive. Let the GC guys do all the work for you and follow, follow, follow the whole time because they have to drop you because most likely while it goes in to those first mountain stages on stage eight of this year's Giro d'Italia, most likely he goes in with at least a minute, but I bet it's a two minute gap on all the GC favorites, which means you don't need to be aggressive. You just need to follow the competition at next year's 24 Giro d'Italia if you want to win the overall GC. Should be a fantastic Giro d'Italia if Wout does show up there planning to go for the win. And 
Remember, if he does show up at the Giro, that means we're gonna lose a little bit of the shine at the classics from the big guy, because I'm sure he's not gonna focus on going into Perry Nice, driving it 100% for his teammate Jonas Vinigo to win the overall classification. Probably gonna pick just one or two of the one day classics, I'm sure Flanders. We'll see Perry Roubaix there out of Wout Van Aert. But when you start looking at the way that he normally rides, we already know his cycle cross season is going to be changed because he's reduced that in half, basically the amount of races he plans on doing this season. And then once the season starts, you know he'll take a little bit of break early in the season, and then he'll start to bring it back up and probably hit Perry Roubaix, if not Tour of Flanders, to try to go for the win there, back the form back off again, and then come into the Giro. But one thing's for certain, we're not going to see Wild Van Aert flying all the way through the cyclocross season into the early race season and then carry it all the way into the Giro. That's where his strategy really has to change if he wants to win the Giro. Got to look at diet, got to look at race program, and strategically when you're racing, he has to be careful with how he uses his energy in the Giro and he has to be careful with how his team uses his energy in the Giro if he wants to win the 24 edition. Anyways, that's my take up here for the big guy. Hope to see him racing next year's Giro because it'll keep it exciting for us fans sitting on the Chesterfield. Like and subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next edition real soon.